The topic of my talk is large-scale semantic 3D reconstruction. I start with our interpretation of semantic 3D reconstruction. Given, the set of, given a set of images, the goal is to simultaneously reconstruct the 3D geometry and the semantic segmentation of the observed scene. As an example, consider the image on the left. In this, goal, in this case, we would like to reconstruct the geometry of the house, which is highlighted in red and to assign to each object element a semantic category, which in this urban case could be ground, facade, roof, and vegetation. A possible result is shown on the right where the semantics are reflected by the colors. What is our motivation to do that jointly? There are synergies between these two domains in both directions. We have on one hand object classes which live in scene space and not in image and vice versa assumptions about shapes are object specific. This mutual support allows us to use advanced priors to be able to reconstruct complex scenes. In this concept, this slide shows you on the right how class specific priors can lead to superior 3D models compared to a generic regularization of the surface area shown in the middle. Furthermore, this mutual support leads to consistent semantics across all images as it is illustrated in the right figure here. This joint approach leads to attractive results, however, up-to-date methods are memory hungry and computationally expensive. And in our work, we will demonstrate how it is possible to scale one of the available methods up to be able to reconstruct whole cities which allow for realistic applications. So basically, previous work can be categorized according to the dominant representations in our field, which are depth maps, meshes, and for this case, probably most popular volumetric representations. And the common theme of all these works is to allow an interaction between 3D depth estimates and appearance-based labeling with some sort of class-specific regular regularization. I want to briefly highlight the methods which are closest in spirit to us. There is Hene et al. from 2013. Here, the authors employ a discrete tight convex relaxation of the standard multi-label MRF problem in 3D. The underlying data structure corresponds to a regular voxel grid with equally sized voxels. And with regard to our method, it has the favorable property that its complexity scales with the number of voxels. Then there is Kundu et al. from 2013, which also jointly infer occupancy state of voxels and semantic categories. In contrast to Hene, the underlying data structure here is a sparse octree, which structure is fixed from the beginning, and the complexity scales here with the number of observed pixels. To address the large scale aspect, we want to exploit two facts in our approach. First, we observe that the high spatial resolution is actually only needed close to class boundaries because most of the volume you model is actually empty or homogeneous as inside of solid objects. Therefore, we will use an octree data structure in our work. However, we will use an adaptive structure instead of a fixed structure. And second, since we aim to reconstruct large geographic regions, we will be confronted with large photo collections and it is crucial for us to be able to handle and process those. The data consists of more than 500 aerial images combining both oblique, oblique and nadir views in a Maltese cross. The images are oriented and finally depth maps are calculated from semi-global matching and class likelihoods from a multi-class ADA boost and depth maps and class likelihoods go in as input data into our algorithm. This shows the algorithm at a glance. So we basically start with a coarse voxel grid with equally sized voxels. We minimize its energy. We then refine the discretization only close to the predicted surface. We update data and regularization term for the refined voxels and we finally minimize the energy which is induced by the refined discretization. The steps in the red box are performed iteratively until our model reaches a desired target resolution and actually the red box also contains our contribution and I will explain now the key elements of it in the following in detail. 
So we built our method on Hene et al. and extended it to be able to work in adaptive discretizations of 3D space. The basic model is formulated as convex energy function over a voxel space omega and encodes the following variables. We have the x's, which are the indicator functions. They are measuring the preference of a voxel to belong to a certain class. Then the y's are the local orientations of the boundary surface. They are defined for each pair of classes and for each grid direction. The rho is the unary term. It encapsulates the depth map evidence and the class likelihoods, which we have heard before. And finally, the phi is the anisotropic class-specific prior, which in this non-metric form is one of the key ingredients to exploit semantics for 3D reconstruction. The main difference in the multi-resolution model is the superscript L for omega and phi. So in the case of omega, we have now a hierarchy of discretizations with voxels at different resolution. The phi L indicates a resolution-dependent regularizer and will be explained later. In this adaptive formulation, we seek now to fulfill few requirements. First, each voxel must hold the same set of variables independent of its resolution. In that way, we can actually reduce the number of unknowns by storing voxels at an adaptive resolution. And also, the information spreads more quickly over the whole volume via the bigger voxels, which makes the whole method faster. Further, the energy can only decrease during the refinement process and also the adaptive energy corresponds to the tightest possible approximation of the underlying energy in which all voxels are at the highest resolution. The relation be the, between the adaptive and between the baseline method, they are related via additional equality constraint um, on the indicator and transition variables. Here, S bar denotes a descendant of a bigger voxel and K a grid direction. And as for the transition variables, since we are working with forward differences, only the particular boundaries are highlighted here in black. In this slide, in this interpretation, the new energy can be now seen as a constrained version of the baseline energy, which is defined over a fixed grid. Now let's have a look at the key features of the refinement process. As mentioned before, we employ an adaptive multi-resolution model, which is progressively refined only close to the predicted class boundaries. This is in contrast to an octree which structure would be fixed from the beginning. Then after a voxel is refined, the new transition variables become active only at the boundaries of the parent voxel, as it is illustrated in the middle figure here with the colors red, green and yellow. And going further down the line to the right figure, when we are performing an arbitrary number of refinements, the regular, regularizer needs to be reweighted and the direction dependent contributions of the active transition variables are summed up. The last missing element is now the splitting criterion, which tells us which boxes are likely to contain surfaces. So in our case, we split, simply split all neighboring voxels which are assigned to different classes. This is shown here for two, two different resolutions. We have in the left column the initial situation. We then look for all neighboring voxels which are assigned to different classes. We highlight them in the middle column with the black dots and we split them in the right column. As it is often the case in city modeling, we lack 3D ground truth. As a pragmatic alternative, we simply back project the semantic labels into representative image of our data set and we do a per pixel verification against hand label ground truth. The comparison to a fixed grid at target resolution shows that we deliver almost identical results. In fact, the differences are smaller than 1% and mostly due to aliasing from which we conclude that our model have the same quality. The video in this slide shows you how one of our models evolves over several number of refinement steps. When we do an hour comparison to a fixed grid at target resolution, we save 95% memory with our adaptive approach and we are also 95% faster for five refinement steps. And the savings increase 
with resolution, um, the savings increase with a refine with a number of refinement steps, in particular with a factor of 1.9 to the power of n for re n refinements, which actually underlines the theoretical assumption that we model surfaces and the quadratic number of elements rather than volumes. The performance comparison and evaluation was performed so far only for subsets of our dataset as we were limited by the memory hungry baseline method. I proceed now to our target application, which is large scale 3D city reconstruction. This video shows you the result when we process all of our aerial images. It's a city in the Netherlands, it's Enschede. The whole area is roughly three square kilometers and it is modeled at a target resolution of 0.8 meters. You will see now a zoom in of our model compared to one of our input images. So we use 30 gigabyte of memory instead of 430 to process this model, which is in line with our 95% savings. And you will see now a second zoom in of the model with compared to the input data. It shows you actually the tower, which you have seen throughout the whole presentation. It is a very flat region, as it is typical for Netherlands. In more complex terrain and topography, we actually expect to gain even higher savings in memory. We are happy to discuss details at our poster and thank you.